Last Friday, I took the Cisco and Core exam at home and I passed. Now, in this video, I'm going to share with you all the details that you need to know to pass the Cisco and Core exam. And I'm going to structure it into three or four main topics. So first will be the study strategy that I used to prepare for the exam. And second will be the exam registration process, uh, what I did uh, so that you know what you have to do uh, when you will register for the exam. And also a little bit about the exam experience itself. And finally, uh, my conclusions about the exam and probably about Cisco exams at all. Before I start recording this video, I actually had to write some notes that I can use uh, as a guide just to prevent me from saying something that I'm not allowed to say, especially in front of a camera. Okay, let's begin with exam strategy. And I actually used the framework that I uh, shared a couple of months ago on how to pass the Cisco Encore exam in 90 days. And I gotta be honest with you. I was only able to pass the exam in 90 days or three months because I was already a CCIE. So I already had exposure to uh, a lot of the technologies, if not, I would say 90% of the technologies. So I was quite familiar with those topics, except for wireless. So wireless uh, isn't something that I used to work on a lot. It wasn't challenging uh, but it was something not new as well but different uh, in comparison to the other topics in the exam so uh, the framework I will have to update to be something around uh, six months at minimum so I don't believe uh, someone who doesn't have uh, a lot of experience with the topics like um, BGP tunneling uh, IPv6, wireless, uh, Lisp, uh, SDN, like SD1 uh, and SD, I would say SDA. Uh, so if you don't have already experience with those technologies, trying to take the exam in three months, I wouldn't say it's impossible. I would say it's very, very challenging, especially if you decide to apply the strategy that I recommend on combining uh, theory with the lab hands on all the time. OK, now as for the resources, I use most of the resources that I already had from previous Cisco exams, except for Cisco and core uh, official certification guide that I didn't have. And definitely it's a must to have in case you want to take the Cisco Encore exam, but it shouldn't be the only resource uh, to use, especially uh, in this type of exam where you have things related to automation, SDN. So a lot of uh, things related to automation, SDN, I actually had to use also uh, some online forums or other websites outside of Cisco environment. So this is a nod. Uh, that I'll share in the video description some of the websites that I use and you can use as well uh, during your Encore exam preparation. For the labs, the situation was the same. So I already had uh, Cisco images except for things related to wireless. So I had to get the Cisco virtual wireless controller or wireless LAN controller and also some access points uh, that I was able to play with and probably you saw a couple of videos uh, related to Cisco wireless technology in this channel. Now let's talk about the registration process. Personally, I like to take the exam at home. So during the registration, I chose the option to take the exam at home or online. And then it took me through all the steps, uh, select the exam, the time, and then at the end of the registration, you have an option to download the file to check whether your computer meet the requirements uh, to take the exam. Now, my recommendation is, if possible, that you only use that file, that you only download that file on the computer that you plan to take the exam on. OK, uh, initially, I wanted to use a computer running Linux. And because I did this validation before the exam, I was actually able to validate that the software uh, it is not compatible with the Linux environment. OK, so 
it's only compatible with some Mac version and Windows version. So I was able to detect that before the exam. So you might want to run that uh, verification before the exam day. Now in the exam day, you have to go through that verification process again. In my case, because I use the same computer, uh, it took less time to complete the verification process. Now, then I had to uh, take pictures of myself, take pictures of my ID documents, and then take pictures of my desk. But actually I didn't use uh, this desk or I didn't take the exam in this place I took on a different room and house uh, because if you plan to take the exam on the on your desk so you will have to clean your desk you have to remove a lot of things and I have some things uh, written on the wall so it would be just a lot of mess so I decided to take uh, somewhere else and I just used the laptop and my desk was actually just uh, a chair that I have on that room Okay, so just to make things easier. Now, once this verification process is completed and you submitted all the documents, uh, you will be on queue to take the exam. And this process might take around 15 to 10 minutes, depending how many people are on the queue. Because I did uh, probably before the last time, I was the only person on the queue. So it didn't take long. And actually I used that time just to keep calm, um, reflect about the exam and just be positive about the exam itself now then the exam started and i had questions like um xyz abc dfg and a lot of stuff and it was interesting uh especially uh for me as a ccie and it was the first time taking this type of exam where you have not only theory and you also have uh, some labs uh, during the exam process and it was quite interesting okay so this is aligned with the study strategy that I mentioned before on uh, how you need to not only memorize or know the theory but uh, it requires you to have also some experience with the technology before taking the exam okay so kudos to Cisco for that improvement I really enjoyed the process uh, so the exam uh, took, I don't know, around 170 minutes and I believe uh, I had 30 minutes or so before I finished the exam. Now, when I finished the exam, I didn't see the results. Uh, I don't know. So Cisco have been making some changes on these. Uh, the last time I remember you were able to see the results or if not to have the feedback that you passed or failed. Uh, I don't know, I didn't see that. I only was able to look at that information probably a couple of minutes or one hour after taking the exam. Now, my conclusion about the exam, was it harder or easier than I expected? Mm, I like to put it this way. Uh, the preparation phase I believe is the hardest one for me because I really, really like to dive deeper into the topics, into the technology. So that's the hardest part for me. Then at the exam, it becomes the easier part, okay? Because a lot of things that I face on the exam, uh, I would say that I was already prepared. I wasn't prepared for those questions, but I was prepared for those type of questions. And especially when you have to configure a couple of things. Uh, so Cisco expects you to really know uh, what you're going to do. So it's not just about memorizing things. You really, really need to know how the technology works, uh, how to provide a solution, how to answer something without uh, making any change. But it's really... Uh, comes down to your experience, your exposure to that technology before taking the exam. Okay. Now, why did I say that I might not take any Cisco exam anymore? Uh, the thing is, I am CCIE uh, Enterprise Infrastructure, CCIE EI, and I'm also CCNP Security, and I'm also uh, CCNA Cybersecurity. 
and I don't know, something related with data center. There's a lot of certifications that I, I keep forgetting this time. And the thing is, I don't see any added value to keep those certifications up to date. On my day-to-day -day job, uh, they don't make that much of a difference, especially now that I want to shift a little bit from uh, infrastructure, networking infrastructure as a role, and trying to dive a little deeper into uh, cybersecurity offensive or offensive cybersecurity. And so the Cisco CCNP track, it's more for cybersecurity, but on the defensive side. And uh, I don't know, it's just something personal, but I don't see any reason to keep studying for those certifications. Now, does it mean that I won't have experience with those technologies? Not at all, because once you learn, you learn, you know, you know. Okay. It's just, I don't have to commit to keep those certifications up to date. I don't have to study to pass any exam related to that. Uh, so this is just me. So I will keep the enterprise uh, certification, the enterprise status up to date. Uh, this is uh, a lifetime achievement for any network engineer to hold the CCIE. And I don't plan to just uh, let it go away just like that. But definitely, uh, I'm looking more on ways to better use my time on things that really have more impact, really have more, uh, benefits for me and also, uh, to my clients. So definitely keeping other certifications up to date, uh, is not a big or a requirement for me. Okay. Okay. So this is what I want to share with you. And if you got any value from this video, uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you in the next one.